episode 58 or is it 57.2 i don't know you decide um another episode's coming straight out you're probably sitting saying to yourself two episodes one day two episodes within 24 hours in fact even less than 24 hours because episode 57 literally came out this morning at 8 a.m and we're now sitting here at a lovely six minutes past the hour of 10 recording another episode the reason being um If you have listened to episode 57, and I do hope you do, because you know what? I actually thought it was quite a good wee episode. I quite enjoyed it. A wee bit of ranting, a wee bit of chat, a wee bit of jokes. It was lovely. But the audio was shocking. Shocking to the point where I don't know what happened. Absolutely catastrophic. Technical difficulties at this end. Um... But you know what? Sometimes you just got to put you just got to put it out. You're on a deadline. You've just got to admit to yourself. Listen, that was one of the shitey ones that sounded like we were recording it inside a giant's pocket. Um, but hey, I I think what's happening is now my my Mac um it's it's dead. It's dying. Right, it's dead. It's 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 basically if, if my if my uh, if my computer was a person was a human, it would have been sent home. To die quietly in its own bed. That's the position we're at now. Can't get any more upgrades for it. Everything's fucking slow and doing. So I think yesterday it was just trying something else. And it's went, no, we're not, we're not plugging the microphone on. No, it's not happening. So um, so we're going to do another episode today. Hopefully, better audio. And uh, even the video to go with this one as well. Because the fucking video didn't have any audio yesterday. So it was an absolute double disaster. Um, but we've woken this morning. To fantastic news, um, the uh, the Pfizer, uh, the the virus, the the virus, the vaccine, it's gone ahead. You know, Pfizer's happy. They they've done all sorts of tests, and um, hey, it's happening, man. Uh, UK approves uh, Pfizer COVID vaccine. Um, what that means for us, I don't know, but we should be prepared at any moment to have your bum cheeks uh, exposed to a general practitioner. And uh, I don't even know if you get the jag in the bum. Do you? Is it in the arm? Is it? Is it in the, is it in the jag? Imagine it was in your bow. Imagine they had to inject for the only way for the COVID vaccine. <laughs> and uh, listen, after what's happened this year, it wouldn't fucking surprise me if this is what it is. The coffee cup is so far down the desk, I can't even reach it. What a disaster! Wouldn't it surprise me if to get the vaccine for the vaccine to work properly, they've got to inject into your eyeball. That that would be that would be the fitting end to COVID, I think. For for the West. Not for China. Not for the Chinese. I mean they're fucking oh, they're happy as Larry. They vaccine they give a fuck. They've got the moon for God's sake. Apparently a, a Chinese uh, shuttle landed on the moon. You know? They're, they're, they're on the fucking moon, for God's sake. They're not caring. Not a jot. No fucks given. Uh, but I think it would be a fitting end to COVID in the UK if you had to queue uh, like you're getting rations in some Eastern European war-torn country and uh, a, a newly qualified medical professional. I use the word professional. Small p for professional. Um, shoves a six inch needle into your eyeball and in- injects you with the MI6 Mossad uh, tracking device used to uh, keep an eye on you uh, and see what you're seeing and to ensure that uh, 5G gets a good coverage across mainland UK that that would be a fitting way if you went into your doctor sleeve up, you know, ready to accept the needle of destiny even whilst you're going Pull the drawers down, say yourself, Doctor, do your worst. Aim for the fat bit. And the doctor says, uh, I do apologise, Mr Gibson, but the uh, unique nature of the COVID vaccine means I have to inject this directly into your eyeballs. I'd, do you know what? I'd still take it. If somebody said to me the new, if I was to go down to my doctor's and they put a needle in my eyeball, but this weekend I can go back gigging in a beautiful wee theatre, to lovely people with faces and voices, I'd be like, inject both my eyeballs. 
I didn't give a fuck at this point. But we're, we're going ahead, man. Um, the problem now being, I think, that because they've announced that the vaccine's happening, I think everybody's going to get a bit excited and think that they're going to get it by, you know, by, by Christmas. I imagine we're probably talking maybe... I'm I'm think like I said, summertime, May. Summer, summer, summer time. I think May we might see things getting back to slight normality. But what what is we've gone too long now, we've gone too far. Normal our old lives are gone. There's fuckers queuing I saw in the news this morning. There was people queuing in England because obviously England's on a different tiered system than us because a country like the United Kingdom, which is smaller than most American states, somehow is unable to have one unified tier system to control the spread of the virus. Um, as different tier structures were lifted in England, there was cunts queuing outside a, a, a Primark from five in the morning. Primark! <laughs> What what is going on, man? Have we learned nothing from our pain? Yes, but that is that's that's the case. We've learned literally nothing from the last year. People have learned nothing from the last year. Queuing outside a Primark at five in the cunting morning to get in and what buy forty pairs of socks for a quid. What is what is wrong? What is wrong with people? Um, so according to BBC News, uh, the UK has become the first country in the world to approve the Pfizer BioNTech coronavirus vaccine, paving the way for the mass vaccination. Now, questions being, why are we first? Why is one of the wee shitey countries not going first? And how how are we first? How has nobody else stepped up? The spread of coronavirus didn't go. China, UK, America. It spread all the way through the the uh, the Pan Pacific Asian continental countries before reaching mainland Europe and then on to us. You know? And now we're the first one with a vaccine. How's that worked out? Something's no Again, I've watched too many movies, I've I've spent too much time alone in this room doing these podcasts. But something's not right, man. Something's not right. I wonder if it's like a... I wonder if the vaccine's like a marketing thing. You know, I wonder if when we all get the vaccine, suddenly we'll be like, I have got a real craving for Nestle uh, chocolate milk drink. I've never wanted that in my life. I wonder if the vaccine, it is a chip, right? But it's, it's not a chip that we think, like, the government's watching us. And the government doesn't give a fuck what you're up to, right? The, 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 the concept that the government wants to watch your movements and track you, the, the government doesn't care, right? Because here's the reality of it. A lot of us are very fucking boring, right? We do our job, we come home, we watch Bake Off, we watch porn, you go to your bed. No, nobody cares, right? Very few people do anything interesting. Very few. And those people who they would catch, listen, for, for the for the money it would cost to fucking put a chip in everybody's arse, is it really worth it? Not really, you know. Money makes the world go round. What generates money more than fear? So would the government want to track everybody so that they can stop terrorist attacks happening or stop atrocities happening? Probably not, if they're being really honest, because those things generate fear. Fear generates hysteria. Hysteria generates money, keeps the economy going, everybody's happy. So the likelihood is that if they had to put a fucking chip in you, Bill Gates style, up your farter, it'll be a marketing thing. They want your data. They want to know what you're up to. They want to be able to sit in a room with a fucking a Mac that works on this piece of shit and sit and go, right, what have we got this week? Uh, Terry's Chocolate Orange Gaffer. They've gave us a donation of 16.8 billion squiddlies. They want you to put into the chip that everybody's to crave a chocolate orange and they'll press a wee button and you'll just be sitting in the house going, I could murder a chocolate orange. And your missus like, oh my God, so could I. I was just going to say that. It's pure weird. I We've never craved the same thing together. Both craving chocolate orange. Then you go to your supermarket 
and it's cute in a block. Because every kind wants a chocolate orange, because they've all got a chip up their arse. That, we've cracked it. We've cracked it. That's it. The chip is not a surveillance. It's it's marking. It's, it's big business. Yeah. But would I still take it if I could get back gigging? Yes, I would. I'd take two. I'd buy two chocolate orange. Or whatever it is. Um, Britain, Britain's, this is from the article from BBC, uh, Britain's medicines regulator, the MHRA, never knew that was a thing, says the jab, hold on, let's go back, Britain's medicines regulator, the MHRA, the, the, the same people that can't, you know, gaze off free CBD oil, that's what it should be doing, uh, they say the jab, which offers up to 95% protection just to cover yourself from any uh, law- lawsuits uh, against COVID. It's safe to be rolled out. Safe! Roll it out! We've tested it! The first 800,000 doses will be available in the UK from next week, Health Secretary Matt Hancock said. People should wait to be contacted with the NHS. He added, elderly people, oh, fuck off, those in care homes and some NHS staff will be prioritised first, although more details of the priority list is due later. I imagine the priority list is going to be who is in the top tax bracket, especially for a Tory government. Listen, are we, are we still going to do the line of vaccinating pensioners? I mean, is this, is this no... See if you're a pensioner now, right now, today, as I record, as you listen. If you're a pensioner right now, and you have not contracted coronavirus, you're a super pensioner. Get out there. Roll about in the dirt. Fucking chase the pigeons. Nothing can kill you. Are you going to want a fucking vaccine? Or do you just want to go quietly? Just shuffle off. Why are we still vaccinating old people now, man? Surely it's just... It, your fucking time's up, number six, and you come. If you would not got it now, you're not getting it. Bold statement. I'll probably contract it this week now. Um, the Pfizer uh, jab is the fastest vaccine to go from concept to reality, taking only 10 months to follow the same steps that normally spans 10 years. Now, the scientific argument for that, as we've said before, is that they have had previous experience of Ebola, SARS virus. It is a strand of that virus. They have been working on vaccinations in the past so they've already been very far down the vaccination vaccination stage and as coronavirus has come out the the last 10 months they've obviously stepped up their game and that's why they've been able to put together a vaccine a vaccine or a vaccination in such a short period of time because they've already had this information working this technology going on in the past obviously the uh, conspiracy theory saga for that is that it's man-made by the Chinese in a lab, they already had the vaccine and they had the fucking virus and they've paid it out to the highest bidder. Um, the UK has already ordered 40 million doses of the free jab. Free to you. But at what cost? At what cost? Much as this jab, mate. Well, it's free technically. All we need is your soul. That's all we need. Would you sell your soul for the vaccine jab? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 40 million doses, but man. There's more than 40 million people. Oh, we don't. We're not vaccinating kids, are we? They're, uh, they're safe, apparently. Bastards. Uh, the doses will be rolled out as quickly uh, as the company in Belgium. Oh, aye. Uh, can make it, Mr Hancock said, with the first load next week and then several millions throughout December. But the bulk of the rollout will be next year. 2020 has been just awful and 2021 is going to be a lot better, said Mr Hancock. Never trust the fucking stories. I'm confident with the news today that from spring, uh, from Easter onwards, things are going to be better and we're going to have a summer next year that everybody can enjoy. Prime Minister Boris Johnson added, it's the protection of vaccines that will ultimately allow us to reclaim our lives and get the economy moving again. Get the economy moving again. Interesting. Be interested to see what the rollout is, because no doubt that'll kick off as well. Um, 
people will, this is when we'll probably step up, because remember we had the whole key workers thing at the start, right, when we were all, when everybody was a bit unsure and lockdown was real, like you were in the house and you were allowed an hour out, like you were fucking jail time to go and run about your local park, right, and everybody was a key worker then, you know, we're applauding the NHS, and then that didn't last long, and then people started to get pissed off as usual, and then you had like cleaners and uh, folk that work in Tesco, kicking about going, I'm actually a key worker, like, Sandra, shut the fuck up, okay, okay, the only person that's a key worker in Tesco is, is the woman that puts the yellow stickers in the markdown food, that's a key worker, the rest is can fuck off, alright, but, are, are those people going to be the first rollout, you know, of the vaccine, good, I mean, bus drivers for God's sake, bus drivers, train drivers, Surely, surely those people should be given access to the, to the vaccine first, above anyone else. Comedians, dare I say, performers, will probably be last, as always. Uh, but the vaccine's coming. It's coming. Stand by your bunks. Make sure you've got a good pair of pants for the day you need to go to doctors for your jab. Don't be rocking up with a pair of old tattered boxers on or a, a dirty pair of skiddy knickers. Get yourself down to Primark like these cunts did at five in the morning. Uh, bundle together what money you have and get yourself a nice pair of pants for when you go to the doctor. Now, I wouldn't go down the sexy route unless you've got a sexy doctor and this is the, the time you want to make your move. Who who am I standing in the way of love? Um, but, you know, I think... The, our NHS staff have been through a lot this last year. I think the very least you can do is wash your ass and have a clean pair of pants on when you go to see a GP to get your COVID fucking jag. I think we should all. I think we can all agree on that, right? Don't need to make a big reveal of it. You don't need to ask the doctor. What do you think of my knickers, doctor? That's you know. That's going to make it a creepy situation. You know, if the doctor brings it up. What's a lovely pair of boxer shorts you have there? You can tell them. You can go, oh, I fucking got these to the pre mark. Especially for you. Maybe don't say that, you know. <laughs> Imagine being a GP. <laughs> got to jag somebody's ass. You just. I mean, the doctor doesn't take your trousers down. That be, you take your trousers down, right? And uh, I've got to say, Mr. Gibson, that's an absolutely cracking pair of boxers you got there. I bought them especially for you, doctor. That would be weird. You'd maybe be struck off. <laughs> so be prepared is what I'm saying unlikely you'll get it before Christmas so maybe Santa will bring you a nice pair of knickers eh? keep aside a wee pair of Calvins you know the Calvin Kleins uh, spelt with a K and a K right? your mom gets you for the fucking govern market keep aside a pair of them for when you get the lottery card to go in and get your arse jabbed and then just put a nice wee clean pair of bulkies on. That's, that's all I'm saying. For the doctors. Uh, God help us, man. God help us. Who knows who's in the corner? Eh? Who knows? We could get over COVID and then it could be super COVID. Or the vaccines start backfiring. People turn into zombies. We all start eating each other. Who knows? Just clean your ass before you go. That's, that's, all, that's all we're saying, really. It's just, you know, make sure you get a clean ass. That's the least we can do. I keep banging off this fucking desk, man. And what I really, I mean, obviously, I'm fucking skint. I've got a potty pissing, right? But if if the world ever does change and we turn the corner and we get back to gigging again, I'm touring, man. Oh, God. How nice would it be just to tour again? You know? Just get in your car, drive a few hundred miles. Gone to a wee gig. I actually had a dream. This is how, this is how much I'm missing stand up. I had a dream the other night. I was in Elgin, and I was doing a gig in Elgin. Nobody, nobody ever dreams of being in Elgin. Trust me, believe me in that. No one has ever, in the history of humanity, gone to sleep and had a dream about Elgin. Never. It's never happened. I am the first person in the history of mankind. To ever dream about Elgin. But that's how much I'm missing stand up. Not that Elgin is a shy hole. It's a beautiful wee town. Um, lovely part of the country. Beautiful drive. Nice drive up there as well. 
And uh, used to always do a wee, nice wee gig. Used to go to a place called the Druthy Cobbler, which was a pub run by amazing people, lovely people. I think it's now since shut down. I think due to COVID and uh, I think maybe just lack, lack of business as well. And it was a shame because, I don't know why we're talking about this, but great people, lovely people, nice venue, good pub, good food, good booze. And uh, so they had a kind of, you went doing this kind of wee side lane. And then I imagine it must have been some kind of barn. It looks like a barn for the outside. Obviously, it's all renovated, beautiful. Nice bar downstairs, and then they had a venue upstairs. And uh, you could maybe get 60, 70 people in it. God, where does that come from? It's too early in the morning for these podcasts. Um, just a lovely wee room, you know, a lovely wee room. And when it was busy, you know, when you'd like, well, when it was sold out, it's packed, you know, so it was... Great wee room, man, and um, sadly no longer there. So I don't know where we're, we need to find somewhere else in Elgin, maybe the town hall or something like that. I don't know where we're going to go. But it's, uh, am I dreaming about fucking Elgin? That's how much I'm missing stand-up. I would love to, see once this is over, I would love to, I'd love to go and do parts of Scotland that I've never done before, like right up in the Highlands, some of the islands as well. I'd love to go to Orkney. I'd love to just go to, places where one I haven't been before and two a little bit more remote so that you would hope that more <laughs> you would hope that more people come out that, I mean that's a kick in the balls when there is a, literally fuck all happens in a town and then you rock up and still nobody comes out to see you. <laughs> that's what I love about Scotland as well you would say to people all the time do you know there's never there's never anything on here there's nothing for the kids to do and the young mums and dads, there's never any entertainment. There's a comedian who's come up for Glasgow to do a comedy show, Edinburgh Award winner, the only Scottish act in history to win the Best Newcomer. He's one of the finest storytellers country's ever seen, you know, and he's, he's coming up to do a show. Aye, but it's, it's Tuesday and Bake Off's on Tuesday, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? That's why I always loved Oban. Oban would always, always come out. Doesn't matter when, what day of the week, what time of the year you go. You always get a good crowd in Oban. And I like Oban, man, because it's a bit rough, you know. It's kind of it feels like a town of pirates, you know. So you always get a good, good bit of banter, and the gigs. Anyway, I'm just missing gigs. I'm just missing stand up. I did that another live stream the weekend, just gone, and uh, it was, it was all right, you know. I, it's, it's odd, it feels like a really, they feel like a really hard new material night, that's what it feels like, it feels like doing, doing a gig in a new material night that's full of open spots who don't want to laugh, or you know other comics that are, are trying to get one over on you, that's what it feels like when you're just sitting going fuck, just trudge through this, Um, but it just makes me miss live stand up again, just the banter, we'll get there, we'll get there, right, What's been happening, man? Um, finished the crown. Jesus, it was a struggle, you know. I, the problem is, I don't know if you watched the crown on Netflix. Um, story of the Royals. The first series, the first two series, right? The the woman who played the queen in the first two series, I loved her. I, I thought she was a great queen. I liked that time. I got on board. I enjoyed the show. I'm not going to say I fell in love with it because I never enjoyed it that much, but I enjoyed the show and I enjoyed her as queen. And then series three, it's just a fucking sharp turn and that Olivia Coleman's in. I'm like, fuck you, cunt. I hate her as the queen. It's such an... Like I said before, this series, the third series, is such a strange r- writing on, on the show because... You, 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 I can't even speak. You genuinely feel sorry for Margaret Thatcher's character, and that is so fucked up. No, is that because the writer is a fucking full on Tory royalist? I don't know, but you genuinely feel sorry for Margaret Thatcher, and I'm like, what the fuck is this show doing? And then it makes out that Diana's a wee dirty, which we all probably knew anyway. And Charles just loved to batter Camilla, you know what I mean? Just fucking loved it. But uh, it's over, 
And um, I'm glad. It was a bit of a struggle to get through it. Some of it was quite boring, very repetitive. Um, I also wonder if the royal family watched The Crown. I don't imagine the Queen does. I don't imagine her and Prince Philip even... Well, I don't imagine Prince Philip knows what Dairy Week it is anymore. I don't imagine Lizzie does. I imagine she's just, you know, sitting with a copy of the sun in the Daily Sport, smoking a few fags, playing fetch with the corgis, enjoying life, you know? Having egg and chips every night for her dinner. Couple of gins, few brandies, early bed, fires out a big shite every couple of days, you know. <laughs> Just enjoying life, man. Kicking back, watching Goggle Box, shouting up at the news every time Boris comes on. Uh, getting the butlers together to make a human pyramid. That kind of thing. Wholesome fun, you know. I wonder if uh, if if Wells came back in for a hard day roiling, whatever it is, the fuckers day. And uh, he goes to sit down to watch, you know, somebody feed Phil on his uh, on his Netflix. Scrolling past, he's like, there's that fucking crown shite, man, fuck's sake. And he's like, oh, wait a minute here. Play next episode. Get! Get! Get in here! <laughs> Have you been watching the fucking crown on my Netflix account? No, Willie, I, I wouldn't do that. You tell me not to watch it. See if I find it. Anybody in this house has been watching that fucking crowd, I swear to God, man. You'll be in the tower, you bastards. Don't forget, Kate, you're fucking nothing, hen. You're not, you're a mudblood, right? Don't fuck with me. <laughs> One phone got to my granny, they killed my model. Fucking you done in ten minutes. <laughs> oh, obviously because of the whole crown thing with Diana. All the Diana documentaries are coming back out. And uh, I don't think they killed her. I don't think they killed her. I think it was a genuine accident. No, maybe he was steaming, you know, the driver. Maybe he got slipped a few cheeky blues. I don't know, but I don't think the Royals had her killed. I really don't. Um, I think if, if the bold Lizzie was going to have you killed, it would have been far cleaner than that. I think if she was going to get Diana and, and the bold Doddy done, d d Doddy done, they would have went out in that yacht they would have sailed off and you would never have seen the fucking yacht again. Right? MI6 and Mossad would have swept in, dismantled the boat at sea, fucking two in the heat, two in the chest, and then put them in a blender. You would never... If the royal family wanted them deed and they, they organised it, it would have done, it would have been far cleaner and less of a hassle than a car crash in a fucking French tunnel. Listen, the only thing that did come out in that crown show was that the royal, the the queen's got two cousins that are fucking inbred, living in some mental home somewhere. I mean, when you when you're watching that, you're going, in the name of God, what else have they got going on now? If they can completely get rid of a whole side of the family, do you think that they couldn't have somebody killed if they wanted? I don't know. I don't know, man. Anyway, I'm glad it's over. You know. I wonder if, uh, <laughs> even like Christmas dinner must be a right laugh at the royal family, you know, all the fucking shit that they must have on each other, when that, like, when you have an argument with your own family and it kicks off, you know there's always like three or four things that you can bring up, you know, that like really twist the knife and just get, get the argument and you're like, why did you say that Brian, why did you have to say that, that's really upset me, things like that. Imagine the royal family, because we had your ma killed, wee man. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Meghan and Harry will even be allowed back in for Christmas dinner. Maybe they need to sit a wee separate table annexed. You know? Just on the intercom. Can we come up here and fucking hang out with you, cunts? No, you can't. He's fucking left. You can sit and eat your Nando's in the other room. Now shut your mouth, you wee ginger prick. You're not even a royal. Your dad was in the army. Dude. Ah, <laughs> oh, good old royal family. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan, and I'm not a hater. I I have a complete indifference attitude towards them. The royal family exist. They're there. I I assume they serve some kind of purpose. I imagine they cost the taxpayer an absolute fucking fortune. But um, it's going to be, for me, because I've grown up with Lizzie, the bold Liz, she's my queen, right? That, to me, is the royal family. And I think from even the time when I was born to now, 
I think the attitude towards the Royals has completely changed. I also think they've fucked themselves in the arse a few times, pardon the pun, with Andrew and Edward and Epstein Island and fucking Harry and Meghan and uh, all of them, right? I think they're all... I think they've... I think they have shown themselves to be normal in the sense that they have major fuck-ups, as, as do we, as do we, you know? Yes, some of us, uh, most of us don't go to a sex island and, and have uh, sex with young children. We don't do that, but the royal family do. Now, isn't there a part of you that expects that from the royals? Possibly, yes. But I think once Lizzie goes, right, once Lizzie's off, fucking disband a lot of them. Done. Lizzie's deed. And we say to them, right, you're getting nothing mere. Not a fucking penny, not a jot. Whatever you've got, you can keep. And fuck off. Done. That's it. Let them breed themselves out. Or fucking going to grouse hunter. I don't know what it is today. Seems like quite a, a, a boring life. You know? Like, to have that wealth would be incredible. If you had the wealth of the royals, your life would be amazing. But you could live, you know, an extravagant life, a normal life with that wealth. But to be a fucking, to be a royal, even to be like that kind of aristocracy, that upper middle class, where, oh, shall we go for the hunt? It just seems like a, seems like a really boring, shitty life. We all just sit about, Talking about fucking deer stalkers and <laughs> a lovely hunt at the weekend and the polo, how oh, bloody marvellous. Shit. Maybe that's why they all end up on fucking sex islands and dying in tunnels. Because normal life's boring, so they they go extreme. They go the other way. Who knows? If you've not watched it, watch it, man. Watch the crown. For the for the for the only purpose that every other fucker's watched it, so you may as well watch it and you've got something to talk about. Good old Lizzie. She'll be gone soon. She'll be gone soon, man. You know what I mean? When she, she'll get a letter for herself, and then she'll be off. <laughs> Let's look at a wee, uh, a wee cheeky news article uh, sent in by Stephen Harry Wilson. Thank you, Stephen, for doing that uh, on the uh, Patreon. If you're not part of the Patreon, sign up, man. Uh, extra episodes every week, including access to the comedy albums, all the good stuff. Uh, am I going to sneeze? Yes, I am. <laughs> Whoa! I sneeze live on air. My snee- my sneezing is getting out of hand. It's so aggressive. Hold on. Here comes another one. <coughs> oh. Apologies, I might cut it out, I might know. Let's who knows? Hey, if you're listening to the sneezing, it's stayed in. You know? It's the, it's the power of editing. Gen my sneezing is so aggressive. I remember I used to enjoy a sneeze. A chew. A chew. A, a, a nice little gentle sneeze. Carry on with my life. Now whenever I sneeze, I feel like I need I'm bracing for impact. Like my whole fucking body's shutting down. It's fucking brutal, man. Oh. Right, so let's look at a lovely little uh, news article. And uh, this one is an absolute classic. Like I said, sent in by Stephen Harry Wilson on the Patreon. Um, like I was saying before, it was rudely interrupted by a bodily function. If you're not part of the Patreon, uh, sign up. Extra podcasts, comedy albums, live stream shows, all that good stuff for uh, $5 a month. Fuck all, 86 pence a week. What is that? Nothing. Uh, and Stevie uh, sent us this to have a look at, and it's a classic. Uh, Mum, who sold son's games console, left her sex toy in the box. Again, tale as old as time. These images that you're seeing are actually taken from the article itself. Uh, the the young the young mother, young young youngish, the 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 mother, uh, has, has had to pose, had to go outside and pose, um, and that's the pose she's adopted. I'm going I'm going to take a punt. And say a Mark Jacobs watch. There you go. That pretty much sums it up. And uh, she's she's gone ahead and sold her, her son's uh, PlayStation, the old Mega Drive. Uh, lots of questions being raised. First of all, who the fuck's buying a Mega Drive? How old is her son? Why does she still have a Sega Mega Drive? 
is her son in, in her 40s? Is this news story taking a weird twist? Who knows? Let's read on. Um, again, before I do this, I'm going to take a punt here and say that this is a, this is a cry for help. This is a, a, a single parent, a loving mother, who's just looking for a bit of romance in her life. You know, she just, she just wants somebody to cuddle, somebody to snuggle up to in the sofa. That's all she's wanting. And uh, she's been through Tinder. She's done all the dates. Nothing's quite matching. She's not met a man who 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 ticks all the boxes. So she's thought, you know what I'll do? I'll start sending out my dildos in the post with their uh, eBay purchases in the hope that that starts some kind of romance. <laughs> that, I mean, everybody everybody wants a story. This is the problem now with like social media and Hollywood. And I just want to be a star. Everybody needs a story, you know? How did you and my mum meet? Oh, we met in a date nap, son. Or oh, we met in a pub and I saw... What better story than... Well, I bought an old Sega Mega Drive online and uh, y- your mother uh, sent me a dildo in the post and I thought, here, she's a laugh. And the next thing you know, uh, we're married. And then you came along and we're very happy to go. <laughs> Headline reads, uh, Mum who sold son's uh, game console left her sex toy in the box. What was it doing in the box in the first place? Uh, you know how it is. Uh, you decide to sell your son, your kid's old games console to raise a bit of money before Christmas. Uh, you post it to the lucky buyer, the lucky buyer, and they end up getting more than they bargained for when they open the box to reveal your rampant rabbit vibrator. Now, this is not the early 2000s. We are not in an episode of Sex and Say. Does anybody actually still have a, a rampant rabbit vibrator? Is that even still a thing? Surely they've all been discontinued, wiped off the shelves. No? Not this woman. Uh, we've all been there, haven't we? No, we've not. Please. A, a, a message to journalists. Stop trying to make your silly little news stories funny. Because you you can't, right? We'll add the humour. Just you report the news, okay? Uh, this is what happened to a lady called Sarah Fogo. Uh, from Murfield, West Yorkshire. I'm going to say that's not a real name. Sarah Fogo? Don't buy that for a minute. Um, Ardent gamer Shane Trotter, also a fake name, paid Sarah £25 for the retro console. Hold on a minute here. Hold on a minute. Retro, is retro gaming no like a big business? And he's paid 25 quid for, a, for an old school Sega Mega Drive. 16-bit classic with two fucking controllers. I think not. Something's going on here now. Is this starting to take a weird twist and she's actually selling her underwear and pictures of her with a fucking rampant rabbit up her bum? Is that what this is? But it's all masqueraded as a Mega Drive. You know, it's advertised a picture of a retro Sega and it's like, why don't you buy this rampant Sega Mega Drive with rabbit controller only for 25 <laughs> And it turns out a tiny wee box and like, I have been done son, there's no way there's a Sega Mega Driver, Jesus Christ something's getting on here man uh, that's when a photo of Sarah's, hold on, hold on, hold on, let's go back let's go back, so we're too far ahead uh, sold it for £25, sending his mate James Bishop to pick it up for him so this guy Shane Trotter, made up name has paid £25 for a retro games console. He's then set his friend, James Bishop, also a made-up name, to pick it up. Why is his mate going to pick it up? See if any one of your friends phone you went, listen mate, go in days of here, go in that room to this woman's house and pick up a retro Sega Mega Drive for me. You'd be like, no chance, phone down. What's going on here, man? Is this some kind of weird sex cult? I'm getting, te- I'm getting text messages here from Malaka Lee. I'm meant to be doing a hashtag show with him now as well. Um, oh, in the name of God. In the name of God. Oh, sorry, team. Give me five. This, this sounds weird. This sounds weird. So, he's mate James, gone around the house to pick up. Apparently, the story continues... That's when a photo of Sarah's vibrator in a sock was sent to her next to the console box. Was sent to her? So what, he's got her 
he's got her mobile number. What is going on here, man? Sarah said via Lad Bible, oh, suddenly it all makes sense. Suddenly it all makes sense. It's an article from Lad Bible. What did I say at the start? What did I say at the start before I started reading this? It is a woman who's been through hell in her life, you know? She's escaped a, an awful marriage, an abusive partner to, to raise her son or daughter and, and have a have a happy, wholesome family home, you know? And she's like, but she's need, she needs she needs comfort in her life. She needs somebody to cuddle, snuggle up with, you know? A man about the house, change a plug, fucking reach the high shelf. She's been through all the date naps. She's found nothing but bastards. And she's thought to herself, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick a dildo in the Wayne's box and I'm going to send it to somebody online. And the story ends up in Lad Bible. It was my birthday, Sarah says, a few days earlier. So I was having a few drinks to celebrate and I went and grabbed the console from my son's bedroom and put it next to the door, ready for James. So now they're on first name terms. Even though James is not the guy who bought it, James is simply the friend who's coming to pick it up. Hmm. When I grabbed the box, I thought it was especially heavy. What? How heavy is a fucking, you rampant rabbit? Uh, but I just thought it was the manuals. <laughs> of course, it's the, fu- it's the manuals. Everybody knows. That is, you know, that's common knowledge. That the manual of... <laughs> Fucking manuals. The manual for a PlayStation is the same weight as a well-used rampant rabbit wrapped in a sock. Everybody knows that. Uh, I just couldn't work out what he meant when he said a rampant, uh, a rampant one, and sent me the picture over. I could have, I could have died. I could have died because my plans worked and everything's great. Um, I wouldn't have minded, but the rabbit was worth more than what I sold the Sega for. Oh, Sarah. I won it in a competition course she did. A few years back, and it normally cost £45. She knows exactly how much it costs. Uh, I only sold the Mega Drive for 25 So what is she saying? That she would have been happy if she'd sold both of them for 70 I went, just you keep it, son, you've paid for it. <laughs> this is weird. He's got a bargain, she said. In the name of God, I had asked him for it back, but I think he thought I was, I was joking. I'm not sure I want it now, though. What? What's going on here? What is going on? I don't know, Shane, but it was lucky it was for him and not a child. Imagine if a kid had opened the Sega box on Christmas Day, hoping to play Sonic, and there's a there's a rampant rabbit with its tail spinning. That this uh, this feels completely made up. It feels like a fictional story that uh, someone like Lad Bible. I uh, didn't even know that that was a, an actual physical thing. I thought it was just a, a joke, um, but it's but it's real, and they've somehow put this story together. Uh, first of all, let's just strip that last sentence. If you are a child and you come downstairs on Christmas Day and you open up a, a second-hand used retro 16-bit Sega Mega Drive, I think you're perfectly right to murder your parents. That's what I would say. But there you go. Uh, I, I hope... Um, that the, the this couple find find a way to be together and be happy. I'm sure they will. I'm sure once the article goes out and then word has spread, then I imagine uh, James the courier or indeed uh, the other guy who bought it uh, may may return the item to its rightful owner, and um, you know happily live it after. Maybe that'll be the next story. You know, next Christmas they're all they're all in the house together and everybody's very happy. Uh, what a story. Thanks for that, Stevie. In the name of God. Humanity is doomed. We are the virus. <laughs> every every news article, every news article from like Lad Bible or The Sun or The Metro, any, any news article for all these shite publications should just end with a final sentence, we are the virus. <laughs> Regardless of what the story is, ev- the last line in every one of them is just, we are the virus. That's the way it should end. Fuck's sake. I left my dildo in the box. I can't believe it. Any chance you can bring it back? It's worth 45 quid. Fucking hell. We are the virus. Good day. Take care.
Right, this is another article that I saw. Um, and when I first kind of glanced at it, I thought, that's quite cool. And then again, the conspiracy theory part of my brain started working. I'm going, they're going to get inside your head, man. They're going to they're gonna do it inside your head. Long story short, let's just look at the headline. Um, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, for those of you in the know, uh, have developed a sleep tracker that can hack people's dreams. That's right. Hack your fucking dreams. It's no good enough that they're going to put a computer chip in your ass to track your every movement, to put marketing thoughts in your brain. Now they can hack into your dreams. What the fuck is going on? When I saw this, I thought that this can't can't be right. Can't be right. Turns out it is. This is the kind of thing we all think that. Scientists are like doing tests on frogs and, you know, putting rabbits inside fucking toasters or, you know, inside a glove box and driving about for fucking 10 hours and then seeing what happens to it. No, no, they're doing mad shit. You know, they're building vaccines and hacking into your dreams. This is inception. It seems as if the scientific world, since the whole Hadron Collider and God particle, right, it feels as if they went, we can do whatever the fuck we want. Do you know Why? Because everybody's watching TOWIE and Love Island and nobody actually gives a fuck what we're doing. So let's just go mad. It feels as if scientists have gone back through every Hollywood blockbuster in the last 20 years and then just went, right, we'll do that. Come into the office on Monday. What did, what did you watch the weekend, Finlay? Uh, Inception. Inception gaffer. Long story short, um, they go inside people's dreams you know, in, inside their mind, and um, a minute lasts an hour, an hour lasts a day, a day lasts a year, inside your dreams, and, and you go layers into your dreams, and deeper and deeper, and basically implant thoughts into people's dreams, and, uh, aye, it's fucking getting any wee spindle hang, so you don't know if he's dead or alive, or if he's gone mental, you know, it's brilliant, let's do that, let's hack their dreams! A century ago, the article starts, artists and eccentrics uh, ranging from Salvador Dali to Thomas Edison tried to tap into their dreams for inspiration with the help of a steel ball. What? Already sounds sexual. Uh, the method went something like this. A person takes a nap while grasping a metal ball. Upon falling asleep, they release the ball and the noise of it hitting the floor jolts them into a semi-lucid dream. Uh, semi-lucid dream state that they can mime for creative ideas. In the name of God! That is also known as smoking dope. <laughs> I feel as if Thomas Edison and Salvador Dali... Never had access to really good cocaine. <laughs> Here's what you can do. You can either fall asleep holding a metal ball, and when the metal ball falls and hits the floor, you'll be hypnotised into a dreamlike trance where you can mine your semi-conscious self for creative ideas. Or... You can roll up a 20 and take two big fat bunts of this and we'll see where that takes us. That's what it's fucking... That's probably what scientists are doing. They're probably sitting there with their fucking government handouts snorting up kilo bags at a time. Seeing where it takes them. DMT'd to the eyeballs. And then somebody's coming and going... We carry, we carry. Tell him we've just been doing hundreds of lines, man. What about, right? T here, tell him you fell asleep holding a metal ball. They'll never bite. Listen, they fucking believe any old shite, man. Fall asleep with a metal ball. When it lands, the sound and the vibrations transport you into a dreamlike state. I, f I love it. I can sell that. <laughs> uh, the method. Well, we read that. A group of scientists at MIT have attempted to, to update the steel ball technique, maybe change name as well, 21st century using an open source biometric device uh, that detects when a user is falling asleep and influences their dreams. How is that possible? The goal of the device, next, nicknamed Dormio, not, <coughs> not to be confused with Dolmio, the, uh, the fake Italian tomato sauce, 
Uh, the goal of the device is to encourage hip, hypnagogic mini dreams, micro dreams, hypnagogic, gogic, hypnagogic micro dreams uh, that occur in the semi lucid state right after a subject has fallen asleep. The MIT team believes it could it could serve therapeutic purposes or be used to help strengthen people's memory. Or it could also be used to, you are now under my control. When you awake, you will go and you will fucking batter my granny. <laughs> or overthrow a government, right? Maybe they'll batter your granny, but that could be the next thing. You're going to get people being arrested. You know, like the fucking JFK assassinator, whatever his Lee Harvey Oswald. You're going to get people assass- arrested going, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here with a gun. Listen, mate, the last thing I remember, right, I fell asleep with a steel ball and a fucking bionic hand, and then all of a sudden I've woke up and there's 16 people dead. I don't know what's going on. That's, that's what's going to happen. Um, dreaming is really just thinking at night. Oh, my God. Said Adam Horowitz, a PhD student at MIT. PhD student, and you come up with dreaming is just thinking at night. Fuck up. Um, when you go inside your dream, I imagine, you come out different in the morning. But we have not been asking questions about the experience of that transformation of information or the thoughts that guide it. The device is still in development, but has already been tested more than 50 people. Uh, here's a breakdown of how Dormio, which is the bionic hand thing, works. Dormio uh, users wear a hand-worn sleep stage tracking system. They just give these big fancy names uh, that keeps tabs on the heart rate, movement and muscle tone to monitor their sleep stage as they drift off. When Dormio detects that the, user, the users are falling asleep, it plays a pre-recorded audio cue that can be set in advance and records what they say in response. So this is just like a sleep tracker. There's an app on your phone for that. You can get an app on your iPhone. That whenever you make a noise, the microphone kicks in and it records what you say so you can play it back. This, this is this is the new. This is the new. Again, that's just fancy words to make it sound exciting. The purpose is to harness people's hypno hypnagogia, a semi-lucid sleep state where we all begin dreaming before we fully before we're fully unconscious. I think we've all got that as well. We know now that when you are dreaming, like when you're aware of a dream. You're not actually asleep. You're kind of like in rest mode, if you like. You're in you're in flight mode, you know, airplane mode. You're you're no, you've not fully kicked in yet, but you're like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm pure loving this dream. I'm an Elgin. I'm doing a gig in Elgin. <laughs> Hip, hypnagogia. I don't even know if that's a real word. They just make up these words. It's characterised as. Uh, Phenomen phenomenological unpredictability distorted perception of right, let's just start that again because this is science bullshit. Hypnagogia is characterized as phenomenological unpredictability, distorted perception of space and time, loss of sense of self, and spontaneous fluid idea association. Did you get that? Fuck me. The purpose of it is for them to dis- to de- determine a relationship between memory, learning, and creativity. Again, what will help you get there faster? Two big fat bumps and some DMT. Science, science is mental. Mental and weird. This is what they're doing. You think they're working on vaccines trying to cure cancer? No. They're building robotic gloves that can hack your brain and give you dreams while you sleep. That's what they're doing. Maybe they'll do this with like creative types, you know, people who have ideas, like obviously Steve Jobs did, but that that type of big tech, big business, you know, kidnap them, right? Hear me out, hear me out. Well, no, I'm wanting something here. Steve Jobs is still alive. This technology exists, right? Apple is quickly becoming the biggest, most powerful company on the fucking planet. Somebody kidnaps Steve Jobs, sticks one of these fucking hypnagogia gloves on him, sends him to sleep, and when the cunt starts talking, 
We're gonna invent a wee tiny thing that plays her as a music called the iPod. Fucking iPod, right, I didn't. Eh? This is what's gonna happen, man. You're gonna need all these like tech billionaires are gonna have to start like Elon Musk, think of the shit he must say in his sleep. He's gonna have to start building some kind of fucking protection pod that he sleeps inside so they they can't kind of come and steal his thoughts in his sleep. They're stealing my thoughts. Fucking MIT, man. Watch out for the bastards. So, for now on, when you go to sleep, just dream about Elgin and you'll be totally fine. Nobody's going to steal your dreams about Elgin or try and influence you. However, if you wake up the next day in Elgin, they fucking hacked my dreams. The Elgin Tourist Board has got one of these devices. <laughs> oh, God. Sleep well, everyone. Sleep well. Right. Let's wrap this up, man. Um, thanks for listening. Two episodes in a week. A bit mad. But, um, like I said, the 57, the audio was shocking. And the video never worked out. So let's hope that you are sitting enjoying this video and everything's worked out fine this time. And if it hasn't, then this computer and the whole setup is getting fucked out of that bedroom window because I'm at my wits end at this point. Um, get on the quiz. Subscribe to the show. Join the Patreon. Extra content. Help support the show, support me, blah de blah de blah. Cannot thank everyone enough who's already on there. You're a bunch of legends. You will be rewarded in this life and the next. Um, so that's it. Patreon.com forward slash Big Scott Gibson. Sign up, do it. You know you want to. Treat yourself. And uh, I'll speak to you all some point next week. Stay safe. Look after yourself. Watch out for the uh, vaccine coming. Pick out your favourite pair of knickers. Wash your hands and your arsehole. And fingers crossed. I'll see you in a battlefield very soon. Onwards. <laughs>